Well, hello, and welcome to another FAQ Monday. I am your host, Fluff. If you have a question, you know what? Don't leave any questions. No more questions. We're all done with questions here. All done with questions. I'm just kidding. First question! Is that an antelope Satori on your rack? What made you pick that over other monitor controllers? Yes, it is. I think you can see the corner of the controller here and it's over here, yeah. Um, I am using an Antelope Audio Satori monitor controller for a few reasons. A, the really crappy Persona Central Station is awful for what it is. I just, oh, it was, it was bad. Um, it didn't make any sense to run something like an Apollo uh, Universal Audio interface into like a $400 monitor controller. Um, and also, there's a lot of things internally with the central station, like the center of the mix image would shift sometimes depending on where the volume was. It, it was kind of weird. I could never figure out what it was. And then someone else told me, another audio buddy of mine told me, like, he's like, yeah, that's your central station. It was the central station. So it was just time to upgrade. That's, I mean, that's really the moral of the story. Um, I looked at several monitor controllers and I was only looking to spend about two grand and I didn't want D-sub con uh, connectors on the back because I'm only using two pairs of monitors. So having a giant D-sub harness to use two of the connectors or four of the connectors didn't, I didn't want a bunch of extra stuff hanging out in the back. Also the Satori has presets and is software controlled. And I really liked how the controller was laid out. And I also liked the fact that the Satori had um, an actual subwoofer output that you could switch on and off. So really, it just it had everything I was looking for. I don't look for much. I just wanted something super simple. It sounds great. I have no complaints. It's totally transparent. Um, it's, it's everything that you wish the central station could be when you get a central station, but it's just not because those kinds of components don't really come in anything that's 500 bucks. So I'm really glad I made the upgrade. Uh, the only thing I don't like about it is the fact that it takes up a lot of USB ports because the controller actually goes into the USB port of the computer. And then out from the computer goes into the Satori rack. And that's how you can control with the remote. I didn't know that when I bought it. And I don't really like that, but that's like the only thing I don't like about it. What kind of keyboard do you have? And when are we getting that 2018 studio tour? As Soon as I moved into here, I got a new keyboard and my good buddy, Jason Burns, highly recommended the Logitech Craft keyboard. And that's what I got. Um, particularly, interesting to me with the craft was it was backlit and it was a proximity effect backlighting. So it only lights up when you get close to it and then it dies back down to save battery life. Um, a. B, you can use three different systems if you want. So you can switch between computers or a laptop and a desktop or whatever. Mac, PC, it doesn't matter. You could switch between different systems. I really like that. I have no use for that currently. Although I do sometimes will use a keyboard with my MacBook if I'm using something and it's too far away or something like that. But I just thought that was really cool. And most importantly, see it has a jog wheel that you can use for different purposes within different applications. And this had huge implications for me being a video editor in Premiere because in Adobe, in, in the Adobe apps, which it's especially made for, um, I can zoom in and have different stuff within the single wheel. So I can really speed up my video editing process and I am able to put up videos more and shorten my workload and just really trim down wasted time. It's a very expensive keyboard as keyboard keyboards go. go. I think it's like $250, $275 for a keyboard. And I've never spent more than 30 bucks on a keyboard. So I, I about fell over when I saw how much it was. However, it's worth every penny. I love it. It's been rock solid. Yeah, I cannot say enough good things about it. And Studio Tour is coming very soon, I promise. Do you still use a noise gate in your live rig or leave all that to the Helix? I do actually still use a noise gate. So I use the four cable method into the Orange Rocker Verb Mark III. And right before it hits the input of the amp, I have a, a TC Sentry, a TC Electronic Sentry noise gate because for some reason the gates on the Helix, when using four cable method, they don't really gate the actual signal. They'll, they'll gate, the input of the guitar, but like the noise and stuff from the effects 
It doesn't gate those on the output for some reason. I don't know why, but that's not a big deal. I just keep the pedal in the back of the rack, plugged in and on, and it's fine, just like I would if it was on the pedal board or something like that. But yeah, noise gate for, for loud, high gain, nasty guitar tones. Always a must. And now Fluff reads a tweet. For every beard hair I find in my food, I wonder how many I don't find. My suggestion to you this week is, I don't have one. I want you guys to leave me suggestions down below in the comments. Promote your own YouTube channel if you'd like. If it gets flagged, I will approve them. Go ahead and just promote yourself. You guys deserve it. Share away. Share, just post links down in the comments. I will approve them all. I promise if they don't show up, I will try to keep on it. But yeah, go ahead and promote yourself, guys. You deserve it. I will check out as much of them as possible and leave a comment if need be. But uh, yeah, that is my suggestion of the week, more or less from you guys to me. All the big links down below in the description. You've been wonderful. I've been Fluff. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.